Good afternoon. Uh, uh, you'll see real quickly here that uh, I've just about lost this voice, <clears throat> uh, excitement, or, or just using it a lot, as you guys that know me real well know that's easy to do for me. But uh, welcome to Ford Center. Uh, one of our primary goals in selecting the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys was to focus on a proven team builder and winner someone who's got a proven track record of winning not only consistently, consistently, but at the highest level. And Mike McCarthy, we found a coach who not only checked those boxes, but also has the experience of taking an NFL team to the biggest stage, the Super Bowl, and completing the job. You're all familiar with his credentials that he brings to the table. 13 years as NFL head coach, nine playoff appearances, a winning record in postseason play, six division titles, four NFC championship game appearances, and a Super Bowl victory at AT&T Stadium that we all remember so well. In doing our research on Mike, we learned so much more about him and what he's about, and I'd like to share a few of those right now. We found him to be a man who has strong command of how to direct an NFL team and compete at the highest level. His experience in working with three of the greatest NFL quarterbacks to ever play the game. His depth of knowledge and how the NFL works in terms of the salary cap, free agency, and the draft. His contacts and long-standing associations with other key people throughout the NFL his communication abilities, and his relationship with players, his natural instincts for the game and how to get the job done, and also his familiarity in working for a storied and historic NFL franchise that has a worldwide fan base that expectations are very high. He's been a football coach for 33 years, and 25 of those have been in the NFL. As something to add to this before I hand it to Mike. When I first got in the NFL, in our family, uh, I looked real smart, very smart, because right as we walked through the door, Troy Aikman was the first pick in the draft. And the Dallas Cowboys had the first pick in the draft. And the Dallas Cowboys needed a great quarterback to start. Those combinations of things can make you look real smart when that timing comes together. That's the analogy that I'm alluding to here. Yes, we needed Mike, we needed a coach, but to have his availability and to have his track record and ability to check all the boxes that I just talked about was fortuitous for this franchise. I should spend a lot of my time doing everything that I can in the NFL. Nobody's got a better attendance figure on going to NFL meetings. Nobody's been to any more senior bowls. Nobody's been to any more combines. I, for years and years, when I quit talking, have been listening to a lot of people in the NFL. I knew Mike McCarthy before he ever walked through these doors. And I knew it from a lot of different directions. So that while our time together initially talking about this job was meaningful, so much more went into how and why he's sitting at this table today. So I do want to introduce you to the next coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Mike McCarthy. <clears throat> well, first of all, thank you. Uh, it is great to be here. And um, I'm having a moment here because I don't know where the hell to put my hands. I never sat at a table for a press conference. So <laughs> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Um, 
Second thing, I should have brought my type copy of notes like Jerry did. I got my little, I was trying to be slick and slip this in on you. But no, I, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, to so many different people. But I, I will start off with, you know, this past year has been a year of reflection. It, uh, my wife said I won't make it through 10 words. I think I got to about six. But reflection of just what, what a blessed man I am. Great moments that I've been a part of. You know, I'm married to the love of my life, wife. My, my wife is the love of my life. You know, we have beautiful children, come from a blessed family, you know, and professionally was able to lift the Lombardi Trophy. But I, I do need to tell a story about Saturday night when I was here on the interview. Um, and here I am sitting across the table, Stephen, Jerry Jones, Jerry Jr., you know, Will McClay, Todd Williams, and Jerry's telling a story about um, the purchase of the Dallas Cowboys. And, and at the end of the story, he leans over to me and he, he grabs me by the, by the forearm and reaches out to shake my hand. He says, and you need to be the coach of the Dallas Cowboys. So um, I jumped up and hugged him, but, uh, and, I'll, and I'll stop right there. We had a hell of a time. I'll just, I'll just say that. Uh, but no, that's, that's a moment. That's a moment and that's a story I'll be telling the rest of my life. So um, I, I can't just tell you how thrilled my family are, and I are here, they're th thrilled to be here. So, um, and I just, I can't get over this place because uh, when I was given the, the directions and the itinerary of, of, you know, where everything was at, now, I just realized now where the Ford Center is because the star is so big. I mean, this is, this is an unbe unbelievable facility, but the reality of it is you don't just see it, you feel it. And, and that, that's something that's, that's real for everybody that has a chance to walk through these doors. Um, and I, I just want to tell you, you know, the importance and the understanding of how to protect and, and be the steward of this iconic franchise. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Um, this past year has been a gift. It's been a gift in a lot of ways. Um, it's been a gift for my family and I, Jessica, you know, our children, uh, but it's been a gift with a purpose. And, and that purpose for me personally was to be a better husband, a better father, and, and fortunately had the time to, be a, to work on being a better coach. So I'm, I'm really thrilled uh, once again about this opportunity. And I, I just want to say, you know, my, my family is my team, and my team is, is, is excited uh, to be here and be part of the, of the Dallas Cowboys. Family and football, you know, I, it's great to see you smiling Randall over there. I, I, he still looks like he's 20, 20 years old when he arrived in Green Bay. But uh, family and football, as we've always talked about, was, was always the approach and, and always the focus. And you find out right away that everything in this organization starts and finishes with the Jones family. So a big thank you to Jerry and, and Steven, Jerry Jr., the, the, the whole Jones family. Uh, for once again for this for this great opportunity and lastly um, I'm just going to say this and, and to the fans and you know the commitment uh, will be unwavering but you know, I won my first Super Bowl here in North Texas at AT&T AT Stadium and I just want to tell you I am anxious and excited to get to work on winning the next Super Bowl for the Dallas Cowboys thank you it's a thrill to be here thank you Yeah, Mike, can, can, you talk about, can you talk about what appealed to you uh, about this job and, and what are your expectations for your first season here? Well, I mean, expectations, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that, obviously, once we get going. But, I mean, it's the <clears throat> Dallas Cowboys. I, I don't think you need to go further than that. You know, obviously, the, the tradition and history here is, is uh, so unique, and, and it's, it's an iconic franchise. And, you know, the opportunity to – really get in the room and, and talk football and, and structure, culture, and, and all the things, um, a, a part of you know, what, what we feel like we need to do to, to win that Super Bowl. Really, when you think about expectation, uh, the goal will never change here. You know, it's, about, it's about winning championships, but the expectation is gonna be trust in the process. And that process will be, you know, we'll, we'll get to work on that as, as soon as we can here. So, and, and it's, it's already started. 
uh, frankly, with you know, we're trying to put together a staff, and we don't you know have really anything to share today. But you know, it's it's starting that process, and and that'll be the expectation to just trust that process, and that's something that we're going to have to build and work on every day. Mike, uh, right here in front. During uh, during your time off this past season, how much did you get a chance to watch the Cowboys, and what did you think of the team that you saw? Uh, I watched a lot of the Cowboys. You know, frankly, uh, when the season started, uh, I watched a lot of game tape, and then got into a, a an editing system uh, that I was fortunate to to, to attain through uh, PFF. Uh, you know, we'll thank those guys down there, Neil Hornsby and Chris Collinsworth. But we really just start tracking trends and and, and looking at. Um, a number of different things, you know, situationally in football, and and, and and the Cowboys were, you know, obviously with the with their um, you know excellent offense were were a big part of those studies. So uh, it was more situation specific. But that, you know, I have it just, you know, like I said, in the early in the season, I watched a lot of game tape. Mike, you uh, you mentioned the year off, and you spent a lot of time with a bunch of other coaches that you hired or worked with, and you said you analyzed every play or watched every play of the entire 2019 season. What is it that you learned from that experience that you think will benefit you most here? Well, I mean, I, I need to confess. I mean, I told Jerry I watched every play of the 2019 season, but I wanted the job. Uh. So uh, uh, I, 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 have, I, I haven't watched every play of the season, but it, it was just, uh, I mean, you do what you got to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it was more about tracking trends and, and, and seeing what people were doing, and, and you know, a, you know, a big part of it too when the study is watching players. You know, just watching, you know, watching some of these new offenses, and, and really, there's a couple guys on defense that we were able to study. But uh, you know, we, we spent a lot of time in cut ups and you know those types of things. Mike, what's your definition of the word innovation? And with respect, respect to that, that, that. In what, what ways do you f feel that you're more innovative in your thinking as a head, as a head coach heading into this job? And also, how does it apply to, to the football technology that you want to implement with this team, like with respect to machine learning, supervised, unsupervised, and, and reinforcement, along with perhaps artificial intelligence and application programming interfaces in that department? Well, I, I think firstly, firstly with innovation, um, you know, there's a lot of things in, in football today that have already been done before. So uh, we're all trying to stay, you know, one step, you know, ahead of the opponent. So I, I really like to think that we're we're not really innovating. We're, ev we're you know, it's evolution is, is what we're keeping our, you know, our eyes on. So, and really the ev evolution of analytics in football, uh, I think it's I think it's clear. You, there's so much information now, and you have to really give a lot of credit to the third parties uh, resources out there and because there's some there's some high quality um, companies and programs that are, that are very useful so uh, you know b both not just in coaching and within the organization but obviously in the media and so but I think what you have to guard against is the application of all that information because that to me that's the real challenge uh, the application is is really how much can you really do how's it really going to help the players because the last thing we want to do is uh, give our players too much information and slow them down. So uh, we really try to stay focused. We'll try to stay focused on evolution. You know, cause I, I think we're all pretty innovative. Uh, it's, you know, staying on top of the trends and things like that. But it's it's important to evolve and, and stay in front of those trends. Coach, welcome to Dallas. Yeah. When did you first make contact with the Cowboys? And then as a follow-up to that, was it that singular moment with the family that led you to decide that Dallas is where you wanted to be next? Well, I, I mean, it was, a, it was a coaching search, and, and, and there was a number of conversations. Trace Armstrong, uh, my agent. Let's give Trace a hand. Yeah. But uh, I, I just want to did, did, – you did a great job. Um, and, and so as far as when the you know, initial contact, I can't give you the exact time. But, you know, it, it, was, it was definitely the job that, that Trace and I had talked about. So, I mean, it was – uh, obviously, I think Jason Garrett is a class act. He's, he's done an incredible job in his career here. And with that opportunity coming open, you know, the reality of, of it, these jobs don't open very often. So just to have an opportunity to, to interview was a privilege. And, and I am very thankful and blessed to be here today. Uh, back to Jerry for a second, uh, right here in front. 
Sure. <laughs> Take your hat off, Clarence. Uh, uh, <laughs> trying to be like Landry. Uh, <laughs> uh, talk about identifying him as your coach in that process. Clearly, you only interviewed two people, and you made the hire pretty quickly. What about him beyond his resume and, and what he done in Green Bay struck you? Well, as I alluded to uh, in the opening, my opening remarks, uh, you. Uh, Mike is no stranger to anybody at any level of football, much less uh, the NFL. And uh, so to uh, focus it down, narrow it down, uh, there is, uh, with his background, there's all kinds of resources and people that he knows uh, and has known in a lot of ways and for a long time. Uh, all of that uh, is in addition to anything that you might get from sitting down and visiting with Mike uh, from that standpoint. That's certainly what happened. It was wonderful uh, that Stephen had his relationship and respect that he had for Marvin Lewis uh, relative to us being able to interview Marvin. Stephen had spent years, can speak for himself. And so when we had the opportunity to interview Marvin, it was great when I had the opportunity uh, uh, to uh, knew that we were going to sit down. Uh, one of the biggest uh, things that impressed me was I told Jason Garrett that I was going to be visiting with, uh, with Mike before I, we had the visit when Jason and I were talking. And I said, uh, he said, you're not going to meet anybody any more special than Mike. I love his story. I love him. He's great. And uh, so to give you an idea of a class act, that's, that's it right there in both cases. In both cases, again, uh, my example there of being at the right spot at the right time when Troy Aikman was sitting there when we bought the franchise has really a real uh, deep statement from me. Uh, it, it obvious. Uh, uh, I did hear bells. My sister explained to my dad one time when she was explaining why she wanted to divorce. And dad loved her husband and he said, what's gotten into you? And she said, I don't hear bells. He said, bells, bells? I hadn't heard bells for the last 30 years. What's that got to do with it? <laughs> well, the bottom line is that's a dad trying to advise his daughter <laughs> on the right move. <laughs> the bottom line is I heard bells. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, fourth row to your right. Um, obviously, you've worked, you have a history, you've worked with Joe in Kansas City and then Brett and Aaron. What do you see in the situation that you're inher inheriting with Dak Prescott? Well, I'm excited about the opportunity to work with Dak. I, I think what he's done so far is, is very impressive. Uh, I think like a lot of us in the league, you, you watch people from afar, but when you have a chance to, to watch a player live, and, and I can recall his rookie year when we played him, there in Green Bay, so uh, I've always been impressed with him. There's, you're you're going to be able to run the whole offense and then some. So, uh, and I think he has an incredible foundation to build off of, and and our offensive system will be built around making the quarterback successful. That's that's the way, that's the way I've learned it, and it's the way I, I believe you play offense. So, uh, we have a great one there to work with. Mike, right here, in front of you. What's the benefits of coming from a place like Green Bay or Lombardi, Holmgren win Super Bowls to come here, Landry, Jimmy Johnson winning Super Bowls, that you know the pressures that come with the job? Well, I, I think it, it just plays to your experience. So um, I, I could recall when I first got the job in Green Bay, you know, driving in uh, to the stadium and it, you had statues of Curly Lambeau and Lombardi in the front. So um, after about the fifth day, I start going through the back door. I just don't want to look at it anymore. So <laughs> I, I just, but it's uh, but no, I'm just kidding. It, it's it's a great it's a great experience that, that I could obviously draw from um, and because you have the same thing here. You, you look at the great coaches that have been there, um, you know, the Super Bowl champions, uh, all the Hall of Fame players. You know, you, you look at the, the great quarterback play here. So there, there's a lot of similarities that I feel that I can, you know, use use in this particular situation. But I mean, this is the Dallas Cowboys. I don't think you have to say anything more than that. And and I, I'm just telling you, I, I am I am honored to be the stu steward of this iconic franchise. And um, 
and I told Jerry this in the interview, that that I that I will you know take care of that of that honor and, and privilege and, and that responsibility, um, that and because I, because I, I understand it and, and and I and I know what it takes. Hi, Mike. Uh, welcome to Texas. Uh, you spoke about the quarterback being a linchpin of your offensive system. How do you plan to use your running back, Ezekiel Elliott? And Jerry was frustrated with special teams play this past season. In your mastermind with the other coaches you had this year, how do you plan to attack special teams here as a head coach? Well, I think, you know, first off with Zeke, he's going to get the football. I mean, let's not make, you know, make no mistake about that. I think you, you have to you know, clearly understand it. When you say the, the, the offense is going to make the quarterback successful, um, the best way to make them successful is a, is a great run game. So, um, so it, we, we clearly understand what we have here and how we could build off of that. And special teams and all those things, you know, I, I've had an opportunity to do my own evaluation. I'll have an opportunity to, to visit with some of the coaches uh, on the current staff. And, you know, those evaluations um, will play into, you know, the direction we go with the coaching staff. So uh, special teams will be a priority here. Mike, you talked about what your goals were for yourself last year. Could you amplify a little bit more on how you're different after that year off? How am I different? Uh, I think the, the only real thing is my experience has grown. Um, you know, I've, I've had a chance to, to grow personally and professionally. Uh, I've had a chance to really catch my breath, you know, ha having a great time with, with my beautiful wife, Jessica, and, and our family. I uh, do things I've, I've never never done before you know I was on a boat in August I mean, that's, that's never happened before I mean so I mean but just to do things like that and but no it's so personally it was great I just had great quality time just to you know to take your you know take our two little girls to school you know a lot of the time I just really enjoyed that but the football part of it really did when you don't have to play on Sundays and you can sit there and watch games and and, and, and take it in as a fan, you, you know, obviously you, you appreciate it, but uh, just to be able to watch, not only watch cut-ups and, and watch video, I spent a lot of time going back and, and, you know, putting together my first talk to the football team, the first talk to football operations, and uh, we spent a bunch of time on the analytics approach, just, you know, what's out there and, you know, what, what can you use and, you know, put together, the, you know, an organizational chart for, you know, football technology department. So, I uh, really took an A through Z approach as a head coach and had a chance to go back and clean things up. And uh, whether I'd l I liked the way we did it the first time, then, you know, we'll just clean that one up. If not, we'll, we'll change and adjust and, and um, just get it ready. So yeah, it, it was a great experience. I, I, I mean, I, I tell you, I, I recommend it if anybody's ever in that situation because um, I personally got a lot out of it. Welcome to Texas, Coach. Thank you. Um, happy, happy wife, happy life, right? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, your, what was Jessica's thoughts when you first accepted the job? And, and this is a two-part question, Coach. Uh, what was Jessica's thoughts and the rest of the family's thought when you accepted the job? And what do they think about Dallas so far? Well, the two little ones, you know, Gabby and Izzy, they just wanted to go somewhere warm. So, they, they're, they're, you know, they, 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 that was their, their request. So, but, I mean, you know, Jessica and I, we, we had our fingers crossed. I mean, we really did when I, when I came here to uh, Dallas. And, and um, you know, and when I came home, she said I, I look 20 pounds lighter and, and 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 a lot happier. So I just think it speaks to to the um, you know to the interview that we had here and the extra time that was spent and you know you just just the way it all came together. So I mean, frankly, trust me, we're thrilled. We're thrilled to be here. And, and secondly, Coach, we we know what it was like for you being away from the game for. Mm -hmm. For a full year, but how were they throughout? How was your family throughout the process? Well, I think they got tired of me. Let's be honest here. I mean, they weren't used to seeing me around that much, but uh, yeah. So I mean, you go through that. I mean, it, it goes through dis different phases. I mean, it was um, the beginning of the season was was a little tough. You know, frankly, living in Green Bay, you know, so it's you know the Packers are you know that, that's that's part of the life there. Just how the Cowboys are here, in, in you know in Texas. So. Uh, but it, it, it was great, really. I mean, just to go not miss basketball games, volleyball games. So that part, that part was good. So they, um, I'll just say this: if, if if our players in Dallas, you know, listen to me the way my daughters listen to me, we're in trouble. So <laughs> defenses spend most of games, most of the season, out of their base or not in their base defense. There's a lot of sub packages in today's mm -hmm. NFL, so maybe it's overblown what kind of base defense a, a team can be in. But do you 
envision a transition from a 4-3 to a 3-4 base alignment, or do you plan on keeping the defense out of a three out of a 4-3 base? I mean, I mean, that's an excellent question. It's just really not the time to, to answer those. Uh, we, you know, we'll get into that when we announce our staff, and, and we'll make it clear the direction we're going. Steven, I want to make sure your microphone's on. Yes. Um, can, Thank you, Ed. <laughs> I was getting bored up here. I may not quit talking for a while. <laughs> what uh, what are what were your impressions as you met Mike, and what in your mind makes him the right guy for this job? Well, first of all, I've been very fortunate, uh, you know, over the last 30 years to be around a lot of great coaches, uh, to serve on the competition committee with some tremendous coaches, and uh, you know, although I hadn't spent a lot of time with Mike. Uh, certainly felt like I knew him from visiting with other people. And then, you know, when you start this pro uh, process, the diligence uh, that you get into, uh, you do feel like you know him before he ever walks in the door. And uh, certainly Mike and I share a lot of mutual friends, people that we have a tremendous amount of respect for. And, uh, you know, just coming in, as Jerry said, you know, between Marvin and Mike, uh, you know, we knew that was going to be a good start for us because we had done so much work before we ever had the interview. And then to have Mike walk in the door and be even more uh, special than we thought it was going to be, as, you know, as the, as, as the hours proceeded, I think we were about 12 hours uh, worth uh, there uh, that day. And, uh, you know, as it proceeded, it just became uh, obvious that he was going to be a great fit. Uh, uh, for our organization and you know obviously you take a look at everything in your organization uh, from AT&T to the star to our culture to our people uh, the whole you know the whole thing and uh, you know when we looked at it and Jerry and I started having sidebars uh, Jerry Jr. and I started having sidebars the three of us did it was just uh, you know becoming clear that Mike was our guy and uh, uh, it's just great to have him and uh, Certainly, you look at his track record, it's all, all been said. It's just, uh, it was the right fit for us in terms of what we were wanting to get accomplished uh, uh, with this hire. Hey, Coach, welcome to Dallas. Uh, what can you tell us at this point of some of the characteristics you're looking to find in the rest of your coaching staff? Um, what do you like of what you have right now, and what would you like to reinforce? Well, I mean, first and foremost, there's a couple things. I mean, the expertise of of their, you know, their position, their, their, their responsibility, uh, the you know, positive energy, uh, the same same personality every day. So there, there's some common, you know, basic characteristics that that, that, I've, that I've always looked for. So, and you know, we'll we'll continue to work that, and hopefully we'll have it in place as soon as possible. Coach, good to see you again. Welcome so, to Dallas. Um, you got a little more. You got a little pretty good tan there. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> Last time I saw you. Yeah. Good to see you again. Uh, I got a serious one for you and a follow up. Uh, the first one is when you took that time off. You talked about the importance of being brutally honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, what were you most brutally honest with yourself about, and how did it prepare you for this opportunity? I uh, really, I think if you know, in life, you you have to be transparent. Most importantly, with the person in the mirror. I mean, it's. I went through every phase of my life, and, and, and trust me, I didn't fix it all either. I did, so it was not uh, probably need a little longer than a year. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, but, I, but when it, particularly professionally, you know, I, I went back and looked at every coaching hire, you know, that that I made, why I did it, and you know, in theory, obviously it was a good decision, but was was it the best decision? You know, I looked at you know the offensive scheme, and so structure, uh, how we did it. Spent a lot of time on scheduling, you know, just kind of. You know, obviously with the CBA rules, how they keep continue to evolve. So, I, frankly, I, I, look, I tried to look at every component I possibly could. So, and, and I took a very you know similar approach personally. And then on a much lighter note, you were at that divisional playoff game. Did Dez catch it? <laughs> hey, I, I'll say this. <laughs> Tough question. No, it's, I, I'll, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. I, I, cause I had one time out, and, and I think we had a little over four minutes left in the game. And, and I said it after the game, that was one hell of an athletic play. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I was impressed. Because, I mean, Dez and Sam Shields, I mean, you talk about two, two great athletes going after the football. So, but I asked the question in regards to how the role was written, and I was given the right answer by the referee, so then I challenged it. So, and if he wouldn't have answered the question the right way, 
you know, Gene's territory, I, I would not have challenged it. So I, I think it was clearly a, a the techni technical rule at that time. You know, Stephen has since gotten a change on the competition committee. So, <laughs> you know, so, oh, God. I can't, it, I can't tell you how many people from Dallas have told me about that play. So it's, it's funny. But it, it, it was a great catch, I can say now. But it, it, it wasn't then, technically. So. <laughs> Jerry, uh, building off that question, how much does Mike's success against the Dallas Cowboys specifically play a role in this decision here? Well, I, um, uh, it just certainly was influential, to tongue in cheek, but uh, it was influential. Uh, you learn something every day. That uh, comment that Coach just made right there that he had to ask the uh, official for his rule interpretation. <laughs> Stephen these damn officials shouldn't talk so much. <laughs> the coach is supposed to know the rules. We should not Absolutely. have officials well, talking. I was just making sure he explain, knew it. Sure. Rules, sorry about that. That's what I thought. <laughs> but um, uh, no, I, I think, um, uh, again, uh, you get to see up and close. Uh, uh, Mike was talking about uh, an appreciation of what Dak is as a player and said, uh, uh, boy, it, uh, you can look at all the tape, you can look at a lot of stuff. He even had uh, pictures of, of uh, uh, Dak uh, at um, the combine and was showing details of his combine work and, and not only his actual playing work, but we were all going over that. But he said, you still are impressed when you get out there and actually see see how, it, uh, how Dak plays and how he works, the, uh, the, the physical play of him up close and personal, so to speak. Uh, but I think uh, certainly his success uh, was a big part of it because you got to see it up close and personal and go, go home screaming in your play. Hi, Mike. Certainly there's plenty to do in your new role. What to you are the immediate next steps, and when do you envision meeting with your players, including as we've talked about Dak Prescott? Well, the, the next step is, frankly, reach out to some of the players, and, and, and I'm going to start uh, meeting with the current staff. Well, uh, that leads to a good uh, segue. Uh, several assistants under contract uh, when, you, when you got hired. How important was it for you to pick your staff, and how big a uh, negotiating point was that with Jerry and Steven? Well, really, it was no negotiating. I mean, no, seriously. It, no, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, they actually gave me an overview of the staff, and uh, there's been a lot of input there from a, a number a number of people in, in the organization. So, um, and they actually have done a great job, you know, helping me, you know, as far as from the recruiting standpoint and and, and more of the contractual you know, type of things that are, that are ahead of us. So. We wanted Mike to pick his own staff if he wanted to. I mean, not if he wanted to. We wanted him to pick his own staff. I have always thought that. Clarence. Hey, Mike. Uh, welcome to Texas. I, I, and forgive me whether I read this or whether I heard this. Uh, you said, uh, paraphrasing, that not only did you want back into the NFL, but that you needed to get back into the NFL and to coach again in the NFL. <clears throat> Is there a why that you would share with us? I mean, you've had an illustrious career to this point. You've won a championship. Uh, that's a great question. I, I think it's really the reality of what a privilege it is to work in the National Football League. And when you are, you know, out and you're not part of it, um, it, it really makes you take a step back and, and evaluate uh, what it takes from a commitment standpoint to, to succeed. And, you know, through that process, uh, you know, did you want to coach sixth grade volleyball or you want to go coach the Dallas Cowboys? So, I mean, I, the, Gabby wanted me to coach sixth grade volleyball, but I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to go coach the Dallas Cowboys. But no, I, I just think it, it just really, it gives you a chance to evaluate where you are, um, what you have left. And, and frankly, I believe this is what I was put on this earth to do professionally, is I'm a football coach. And, and I am working at the most iconic franchise in all of professional sports. And it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, Jerry, as excited as you are to have Coach McCarthy here, can you speak to how difficult it was to, to part ways with, with Jason Garrett? Yeah. Uh, of the 30 years I've been with the Cowboys, uh, I've written a check to the Garretts. Think about that a minute. To all but two years. 
all but two, counting his dad and counting him, his brothers, uh, all of them. So, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it's a funny thing. Uh, we measure, and we should, measure how good it feels by how we win and compete. And we really should do that. There's no question about that. But I will tell you that I've had a great 30 years around the Garrett family. And it's wonderful, and it's a good feeling, and I, it is one of the best parts of my life. And so my point is, and that's not to chase, and that was his dad, that was his brothers, and all the things that happened to people working together and with each other during those years. And so uh, I do not only respect what he brought to help what we're sitting in, help what we're doing. Their family have been a part of that in their own way. As we all know, not the way, it took too many people, too many former players, coaches, and everybody involved to get to be sitting here today. But I felt strongly about that, and we all wanted this to have a very nice, if possible, under the circumstances, soft landing. And so, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, with all deference uh, there with uh, Jason, uh, like I say, to give you the idea of the spirit of things, when we were talking about interviewing Coach uh, uh, McCarthy, uh, Jason was talking about what a great guy he is and how his story and how much we were going to uh, en enjoy just that part of it in visiting with him. So it gives you an idea. So we're there. Uh, we're where we are. Uh, there's none of this, smallest violin, there's none of this, folks, at all here, at all. I uh, uh, certainly, uh, uh, most of what you criticize about Jared, you should criticize me for. I mean, for Jason, you should criticize me for. And I say that not trying to be big boy here, but I'm just saying you should. Uh, but he's a great guy, he's got a great family, and uh, we uh, know that it's going to be uh, good for him. And by the way, just as I've been, he's been one lucky guy to get to be a part of this organization and the Dallas Cowboys for all those years. And his daddy would be the first one to tell you that. Mike, you, uh, uh, you mentioned earlier you wanted to work on being a better coach in the year that you were away. What are some things you can take from the end of your Green Bay tenure when things got a little sideways to, and apply now? Well, we didn't win enough games at the end of my career, and I, I think you go back and you be honest and go through the why, and, and, and you try to apply that to your, your experience moving forward. So, and, and frankly, I, I've had a chance to, to watch um, them, you know, being in town there and, um, and, and watch the way they've been able to excel and, and see the things that they've done uh, to, you know, to make those changes to improve their program. So. I think you have to be honest. I mean, honesty is the only way you really give yourself a chance to grow. And, and this past year gave me that opportunity. And I, f I feel like I took, you know, very good advantage of it. You got a choice. You can get in that foxhole with somebody that hadn't been shot at, had never been in a foxhole. You can get in, a, get in there with somebody that's been shot at. Or you can get in there with somebody that's been shot at and hit and still going. Now, that's one I want in there with. You talked about using analytics in sort of the broad scope, but on a on a game planning or an individual game basis, I mean, how how important is it to utilize modern trends and analytics in terms of play calling and, and game planning? I really go back to the application. I mean, there's a lot of really good programs. You know, whether you apply it to your game management, whether you apply it to your offensive call sheet, your defensive call sheet, and even as much into the special teams. So, you know, whether you're in a system of you know, green, yellow, red, and you know, all the all the situations as they evolve, you know, during the course of a game. So, the the key to that is to have the systematic, uh, not only the approach but the network on game day. Because the end of the day, it's about Sunday. So, I mean, that stuff all it all sounds good, you know, Monday through Saturday. But it has to be part of the everyday process with the players and the coaches if it's going to be, you know, if it's going to work for you on Sunday. So uh, it's it's easy to call plays on Monday morning. It's easy to call plays after they're over. But you, you know, in the heat of the battle, those decisions, you know, you, you're you're on a 40 second clock or a 25 second clock. So the application of how you train, you know, with the great, you know, and analytics has really grown. So, but it's it's that information 
uh, that you're able to attain and, the, and apply it to the opinion of what you th think you're going to need on Sunday, but you get, it has to be part of that process. And that's where I go back to application is the key. Mike, you mentioned with time we'll find out who's on your staff, but when you think about the film you watched in 2019, what were your impressions of Kellen Moore's offense? Oh, I thought Kellen did an excellent job, you know, especially for being in year one as a coordinator. So uh, I think the numbers you know, speak for themselves, but, you know, it's just like anything. You know, he's, he's played in this league. Um, you know, he's, he's um, you know, coach and he's young, but I, I think really what, what he did with that offense was very impressive. Mike, can you? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mike, you mentioned before you, you've called plays at, at every part along the way. Will you continue to do that here? And, and how important do you feel that is to uh, establishing what you want the team to be, your ability to call plays? I mean, I, I really think we should, you know, there, there'll be a time for these. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not really to talk, ready to talk about it, who's on staff, let alone who's going to be calling plays. You know, so, so right now, as we build the offense, uh, you know, the structure and how we do things will be similar to, to the way I've always done it. So, but, you know, we can get into those questions down the line. This is a question for both Mike and Jerry. Mike, I don't know how much you knew Jerry before now. I don't know if you've, and what you heard about socks to jocks and everything else. Did y'all talk about the separation of church and state? And can you talk about how you guys are going to work together, both you guys? Well, I, I think the best statement that that was said over and over in the, in the interview, that this is, we're going to make we decisions. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, what's in place here from, you know, the, the, in the personnel department, you know, how it's structured. It's similar to where, where I've been. I, I think the, the job that's been done to this point, the, you know, the personnel is very impressive. I mean, that was, that was a big attraction for me. So I'm excited that as a head coach to, to pro have, probably have more input than I've had in the past. But, you know, the way it's structured, uh, very similar to, you know, the way it was done in, in Green Bay and, you know, New Orleans and Kansas City and the other places that I've worked at. So, but, you know, the we decisions was, was stated over and over again in, in personnel. So, you know, and I, I think that's all you can ask for as a coach. Jerry, a lot of people have knocked the fact that it didn't feel like it was an exhaustive head coaching search. But as I sit here and listen to him talking about being transparent with the man in the mirror, we saw that excellent piece with Tom Pelissero about how you were spending the offseason of your life looking to change, be reflective. You've talked about how much you value second chances. How much of those 12 hours with him did you find a commonality there and a guy, as you said, that you wanted to have in the foxhole with you? Like I said, uh, uh, you would have expected it, and it's true. That's what I do is uh, uh, I should have this in my mind all the time about the parts to our football team. And it's a people business, so it needs to be about the people. And I'm exposed to a lot of people in a lot of different ways. I'm very fortunate to have someone that I trust as much as my do, I do in my family that also spend a lot of time. And it has to do not only directly with just the football, but it has to do with other parts of what this organization about. I get much too much credit for the ideas and the execution of what goes on around here that I get from those people, other people. I get much too much credit. So uh, uh, that's that. Uh, uh, I knew Mike's background. I know the backgrounds that he's had relative to uh, how he's operated as coach and how they handle personnel decisions. I know that. And uh, believe it or not, before I got to be involved with the Dallas Cowboys, and that's all I'm going to say about this, on my desk was, if you're willing to give others the credit, you'll conquer the world. Bam. And uh, somehow this thing has turned me into something perceived that I uh, don't like about it, because it is a we deal. Last one, John. Oh, appreciate you. <laughs> Hey, uh, Jerry, Steven, uh, and Jerry, we've talked about this before. No coach has ever won a Super Bowl with two different teams. Why do you think Mike can get it done for you? Oh, my goodness. Uh, we've just spent a lot of time. But uh, I, I, just, uh, I just think it's an excellent uh, – it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a lightning in a bottle. I think it's a, 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 we were fortunate at this time and his time and 
to have him sitting here. You worry, you don't worry about anything, but you want to see, uh, you love the ambition and the fire in a young person and uh, willing and, and uh, dare to be great. You love all of that. But obviously, you want to get uh, the experience that uh, is involved in decisions because we all know every young person gets it, gets stepped, uh, gets stepped on. We know that. That's part of what we are. To be able to, you've heard it here today, to have someone that uh, certainly has had uh, not go exactly like he wanted it to over this past year or two, and to have him demonstrate that resolve just from afar plus have be able to sit there and I mean those things Lombardi's are hard to get a hold of and we know that and that's had one of his own right here to catch that right now and get our time to do it was just an opportunity and uh, 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 you know look no farther Jerry came up to me while we were in the middle of the night and he slides down to the edge at the end of the table. Mike was sitting here, and Jerry reached over and he said, uh, what are you waiting on? <laughs> and he said, uh, you need to know this. I know we haven't had a meeting or anything, but uh, uh, Stephen <laughs> said, Stephen is ready to roll here. <laughs> and said, you need to know that because we hadn't been able to get a talk. And I said, well, I, I just hated it that it looked like appear, what it appears. And he said, when have you ever worried about how it looked? <laughs> and uh, so uh, we winked at Stephen, and he got up, and we came in. Next thing I know, he was wearing it out with Tracy in the other room working on it, boy. And uh, they were getting it done while we were continuing to get it done. And then they did their communication. Me too, Mike. I'll never forget yeah. the night. It was, was uh, awesome. It's just one of those things, experiences that you get to have a bunch of on the way there before the kickoff or after the kickoff. It uh, was a great night for us too from that standpoint. But congratulations. Uh, my goodness, what you've done in a career, that a beautiful story, and, and we've all read about it and what have you, and what you've done, and it's almost trite to say that it happened because of an interview, because it didn't. It happened because of everything that you're about, everything, the very thing you talked about, the very thing that's on record. That's what uh, a, a few hours or a, a better part of a day was about but only a tip of the iceberg of why it happened. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all coming out. Thank you.